Okay, continuing with our UID template design. And the topic here again is bartender filters. So in the previous uh, video, we did we talked about how to put in a character filter. So for example, here I've got cage code and we can go to the transforms tab and we can limit the number of characters. In this case, force it to be a minimum of five and a maximum of five, right? We can uh, limit which characters can actually be input into that field. In this case, all of the alphanumerics except for O and I, which are not allowed in cage codes. We can auto convert them to uppercase. That's all good. It's 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 a it's a great little feature in Bartender. But now we're going to extend that just slightly. Um, and we're going to use filters to allow this template to be used for both construct one and construct two UID marks. So again, the difference is a construct one mark serializes only within the cage code, and therefore it only has two lines, the cage code line and the serial number line. Now, <clears throat> a construct two mark will serialize uniquely within a part number, and therefore it has three lines. And the same thing is true for the barcode. It'll either have two data segments or three. Now, how do we do that? So there is a, a feature in here. If I, if I make this part number empty, for example, um, you can see that I've already had this set up so it would drop from three lines to two lines. And the way that we do that is we take a look at the um, prefixes or the data substrings here, and we go to transforms, and we can set a different type of filter, a suppression filter. Say so suppress when the next data source is empty. We have all of these different options here. And so we can do it there, and then PNO drops away. And what about this one? Well, I can do the same thing, suppress it when the next one is empty. Right? So that, um, or I can set it so that um, another option here, right, as I can say suppress when PNO is empty. I can do it that way. So you don't daisy chain those suppressions from this one being dependent upon that and being dependent upon that. So you, you can do these suppressions in many different ways and they're great because they allow you to now create what it is that you want to do, which is drop from three to two when the part number is empty. Okay, so let's take a look at the barcode. Take a look at the barcode here. It looks like I still have, I put my human readable uh, back on so you can actually see this, what's inside the barcode here. The ISO prefix is there, the ISO suffix is there. There's still something goofy here though, right? Because I got two group separators when I really shouldn't. So um, something is wrong there. Let's take a look at that again. Did I do this? Oh, yes. Um, that is not a variable, right? That's actually, if I look here, um, this is a variable, the PNO variable. This is the uh, second prefix, and that's a variable that gets shared between barcode and text. But this one isn't. It's just a, um, a substring here, and I have to actually create a, a suppression here as well, saying when PNO is empty, suppress it. Okay? And now you'll see up here that this becomes now a correct UID string when I do that. Just to double check, let's put in a value for part number again, and you'll see that now I have group separator, part number, group separators, serial number, right? So that, that now works. Now there's still a mistake here, right? If I go in and I remove my part number, for those of you who are familiar with UID, you'll see that this is an error. SEQ has to be used only with construct two, never with construct one. So how do we change that? Well, uh, you can do, uh, you can define the value of this prefix, not as a static value, but rather as a um, visual basic script. So if I go here and I define this as, I've already got a, a script built here, so I'll just paste it in. It's a single line script that says, if the value of part number is empty, make it SER space, otherwise make it SEQ space. 
And if you want to edit this thing, you can you can pull it into this field here, and now you've got an editing box. If you use multi-line Visual Basic, then you can actually go through and build something up. There's all kinds of different functions here for strings and pulling up the value for PNO. You can just uh, double click here, and that gives you that string right there. So it's pretty easy to build these, and that's a whole different realm of videos. But right now, anyway, that's the change I'm making here. Notice that it happens in the barcode as well, right? So we have now um, created a single template that can handle both Construct 1 or Construct 2 uh, UID marks, just simply by either providing or not providing a part number. Okay, so these are all legal still and everything works fine. I could prove that uh, with my barcode scanner to show you that it works, but I think you can see up here it's 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 actually valid syntax. Now in the in the last video we're going to go into uh, this other tab down here, which is this is template one is the design area. This is an input form, and I want to show how we basically can set up a um, user input form to prompt people for cage code, part number, and serial number. And if they don't put in a part number, they'll get they'll get the construct one structure. And if they do, they'll get the construct two structure. In this form, we're even going to get a preview image. And uh, then they'll see the impact of their data input immediately. So that'll be in the next video.